welcome back to another episode of Big Red's Isopods. This week is Mother's Day. Uh, so today I was at a Mother's Day tea party. <sighs> Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And today uh, we're going to be taking a look at the only isopod I think should be at a tea party. So today we're going to be talking about a species of Cubaris called Panda King. Now, panda kings are the one of the most iconic Cubaris species around. Uh, also one of the most prolific species around, as you can see. There's quite a few of them and I haven't had them for too terribly long in comparison to some of my other species. Um, they aren't quick as quick breeders as Cubaris marina are in numbers or in breeding speed but they are very prolific nonetheless. Uh, as you can see by the little suits they're wearing, they can definitely be allowed at a tea party, in my opinion. Um, and they're just a great isopod to have. Now, unfortunately, they do come on the more expensive side, as all Kibara species are. So maybe they're not as ideal for a beginner because if they were to pass away, like a few of my Cubar species have, unfortunately, and I'll talk more about that later, um, it's going to be more of a heavy hit uh, on your wallet than some of the other species would be. These guys do run up to about 200 to 250 for a culture. And unfortunately, most people have been using cultures of six instead of ten, like are used uh, in the other, um, the other species that are sold are usually sold in groups of ten. And for some reason, people have started selling these species in groups of six, which I do believe is the reason why I've had such bad luck with them. Um, Ice pods do tend to have some sort of, I want to say, number loss within the first couple of weeks of having them due to either being moved to a new location, a new environment, or the fact that um, they just die from old age. So unfortunately, it causes them to pass away. Now that's not ideal, so it does suck, but at the same time, you know, you run your risks. Um, maybe I'm just new to the Cubara species, but uh, who knows? So the way I keep these guys is I mainly have them in the same setup as most of my other ones, but I actually have some limestone in here. Not that it not that they chew on it or anything, I just think that the fact that there is limestone around maybe helps give them more of a, a natural habitat due to the fact that they live in limestone caves, caves where they're from and it keeps their uh, soils more to a preferred environment compared to what uh, the regular uh, setups I have are. Uh, you'll notice there's quite a few stones in some of these angles and shots I've taken here. And yeah, so I think they are great in the hobby. They're a beautiful isopod. They look at how nice those lines are. Some are more black, some are more white. Uh, I don't know. They're just a beautiful species, in my opinion. Uh, but to be used in a cleanup crew, I don't think a lot of the Cubara species would be a good idea to keep in a cleanup crew. But believe it or not, I think the Panda Kings are probably one of the most likely ones you could use as a cleanup crew in comparison to a lot of the other Cubara species because these guys seem to always know where there's food around. As you can see, they'll be sniffing around. They're drawn right to the food. Um, and I think that out of any of the ones that I've seen at least, that these species would definitely be more likely to 
clean up any of the matter that your animals are left over um, and clean up any of the leftover food. Now, these guys definitely do not pose any sort of threat to any species of reptile or amphibian. They're very small for the most part. They don't have any sort of uh, aggression, I would say, to anything. They do like the protein quite a bit, but I've never seen them get kind of assertive over it or anything and uh, not like the Leva species or the Prunatus whatsoever. They do curl up just like the Armadillidium do, which makes them very cute and they are very appealing to the eye. Um, and the fact that they curl up I think would make them less likely to become food to one of your animals. Maybe dart frogs would be likely to munch on them, but with the fact that they are such high breeders, I don't think it would be too much of a problem. Um, so yeah, I think that they have potential to be used as a cleanup crew isopod, but for the most part, they are definitely more of a hobbyist isopod, that's for sure. With how beautiful they are and how expensive they are, I would suggest just keeping them, if you want to keep them in their own enclosure, then, uh, and maybe build them up that way and slowly introduce them into a bioactive cleanup. But you're definitely going to need to have some sort of reserve for them in case the numbers start dwindling. You're definitely not going to want to buy 10 or 6 from a breeder and then throw them right into your animal's enclosure because they're going to be gone. For sure with the 6, it's very hard to start a crew of any or a culture of any isopod with just six. It's almost ridiculous, and that's why it makes me sad that some of the breeders out there have chosen to go this route. Uh, so I think it'd be a best idea for you to get a healthy culture going, have them breeding, have them prolific as they should be. Um, proliferate as much as they should be I should say and um, then maybe slowly grab groups of 10 or more and bring them over and see how they do before dumping a bunch in there because you don't want them to get eaten up or to pass away due to the fact that they've been moved to a different environment what's that you say you want people to like comment and subscribe okay mr and another thing i'm gonna add is you're always gonna want to have some sort of calcium source for these guys you're always going to want to have that with any isopod but more so with a cubara species due to the fact that uh, they have a high calcium diet in the in the wild they're going to need uh, some sort of mimic to that in their uh, environment and yeah, overall I would say uh, Kibaris Panda King is definitely a great starter if you want a Kibaris species, but other than that, um, it's best not to spend the money on it for a cleanup crew unless you are obviously got the money available, you've been planning on it for a while, you've kept a couple other species, and you think you're really ready to make that jump. So for my final notes, I think Cubaris Panda King are great for a hobbyist and they definitely have potential as a cleanup crew. Anyway, see you guys next week. Bye.